when we have doc for example if you have a protein and the ligand what are the various aspects we need to think there are two different aspects right these are the major limitations one is the search algorithm right? what is search, search algorithm it will find the search poses poses right because the protein can form large number of poses the right? individual active sites even the change of the diagonal angles right you can see large amount of conformations so how to see which uh, see which one is the best one so that the ligand uh, can interact and the second aspect the scoring function when your ligand interacts with your protein how to define or how to quantify this ligand one interacts better than ligand two so we need to have a function scoring function to uh, decide the binding affinity right between the protein as well as the ligand so two aspects one is the pose and the second one is a score right which give you the strength of the binding right then how to do this if you look into the search algorithm there are various number of search space if you take the protein ligand docking right it gives many degrees of freedom right what are the various degrees of freedom when you protein interacts with the ligand you can see the translation how many degrees of freedom for the translation 3 degrees of freedom right because you can see x y and z 3 degrees of freedom so likewise you can see 3 uh, rotations so totally we have 6 degrees of freedom right then if you see the conformational degrees of freedom right because you have the rotations right you can see the conformational changes there are several uh, conformational changes that depending upon where how many places where we can have rotations then if you look at the solvent the solvent also may play a significant role in the protein ligand geometry so in this case we need to have a large search space so then if you need to derive a search algorithm which generates various poses and the different orientations right for any particular conformation of a molecule at the binding site so it has to generate various orientations and it has to cover the whole search space for example if you see simple amino acids right and if you have one rotation they can put 0 to 360 degrees if the two one will one will rotate second will also rotate right you can systematically do it right so it takes long time right so there is a trade off between time and search space coverage right if you have more time then you can search more space if you less time you will get less search, less search space so in this case we need to have a smart algorithm right to get different search space and various process right so that also depends upon the type of docking what you want to do sometimes if you know the ligand as i discussed earlier if you know the protein and if you know the ligand right in this case the docking is simple right here just we use the rigid docking in this case protein is treated as rigid right we have the pose protein pose right so we don't make any changes in the protein pose we keep the pose as it is then the ligand we make different orientations different conformations we can make right and for each conformation right we can treat ligand as the also rigid and the protein also rigid and you can see the docking so we get one energy so ligand conformation also we can decide so we make, make the different conformation based on the translation rotation degrees of freedom right and you can see how they fit right with the protein that is called rigid docking in this case protein is fixed if it is one ligand that is also fixed but ligand we can make different conformations and each conformation right uh, confirm each uh, conformation you can get this scoring okay then the case of flexible docking what is flexible docking in this case name itself tells it is flexible right in this case you can change the conformation of the protein at the active site you can make various conformations right in this case it takes enormous time we have, we have the different conformation of this ligand and also we have different conformation of protein compared with ligand and protein which takes more time protein. protein takes more time because ligand takes less time because it is a very small molecule and there are many rings so in this case there is not much rotations but if you take the proteins right even each amino acid residue right even the five uh, residues in the active site right there is several deg uh, degrees of freedom so in, case, in this case there are we can make many uh, conformations right in this case we need to generate an algorithm we need to have an algorithm which can sample all these poses or all these conformations so there are various types of algorithms 
we can systematically search. For example, if you have three rotations, right, and we systematically we go with one degrees. How many times times you have to do with to cover all the space? For one case, it should go 360 degrees. Second, also 360 degrees. So 360 into 360 multiplied by 360. Right, 360 into 360 times you need to do to complete the entire space, or you can do instead of 1 degree, you can use 5 degrees or 10 degrees. Systematically, you can do okay, instead of uh, 1, you can use 10, then 360 you will get 36 times 36 into 36 into 36, which are 3 rotations. If you are enormous, if you are 4 or 5, then ultimately the number will increase, but it is systematic, but it is very exhaust, exhaustive, right. We can determine the exactly which conformation fits well with the ligand. We have one ligand, change the conformation and fit it and get the scoring. You can see these are the possible cases, and we can exactly determine okay, this is the pose where the ligand can interact with the particular uh, conformation of the protein. That depends upon the granularity of the sampling, right? How much uh, uh, times you want to do, right? What is the deviation? Would the, uh, 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 the how much degrees you want to change right. So, that depends on the number of times we need to do the searching right and also it is feasible only for low dimensional problems. If there are two cases we can do it, three rotations we can do. If you have many rotations then it is not possible because it is a very time consuming you can do that because you can see the various degrees of freedom. So, not to avoid that right for example, uh, if you want to systematically do that and randomly also you can do right 1 then 10, 20, 50, 60. If you look at the, this stochastic search randomly you can add, fit, change and find okay, this is possible or not. Second you do it and then see is possible or not. Be, within these two you can decide the third one, this third one could probably lie on this place. Then based on the three you can decide the fourth one. So, in this case instead of doing millions of times you can reduce it thousands of times right this is called the stochastic search. If you look into these results between systematic and stochastic search, right, you cannot find much deviation, but of course, there is a deviation, but not much difference between the process obtained with systematic research and the stochastic search. So, here this is random and the outcome varies because if you use 100 uh, confirmation, we will get some data, get the binding. If you use another 100 close to this not be the same, they will be different. So, depending upon the sampling you do, depending on the space you walk that will give you the outcome and the outcome varies right and you can repeat to improve the chance of success right. For example, instead of 1 million times you do 10,000 times, if the results are similar to the 1 million times then that is fine, if not you can change another chance right. Also among these times they can choose okay 1 and 3 are not good, so we will go to the fourth one. Fourth one is in between 3 and 4, then fifth one we can decide okay we can add assign some other confirmation between this 4 and 5 right they can do that. And here you can it is also feasible for high dimension problems. If you have several rotations they are also possible right to map different confirmations in the case of this stochastic search fine. So, the difference between systematic search and stochastic search are what are the differences? Random. This random because stochastic, the exhaustive the case of systematic. Systematic we can get the the exact pose. Okay, this is the one the lion prefers to bind. But the case of stochastic outcome will change, and the systematic will depend on the granularity of sampling. Right, what is the uh, angle you, you require to change? Right. So here, uh, here this will repeat to improve the chance of success. You can change again, and the systematic is feasible only. Low dimension, right? But here the stochastic we can go with the higher dimensions, right? Mainly for example, Autodoc is about a 40 dimension search. So there are various algorithms have been proposed, right, to do the sampling, right? For the case of stochastic search, right? Stimulated simulated tunneling, genetic algorithm, taboo search, right? Hybrid global local search, and Lamarckian GA algorithm, so on. So various uh, algorithms have been proposed, right, to do this the stochastic search. So, I will explain only uh, two of them. First one is simulated annealing. Here, this is mainly based on temperature. 
So, the assumption is when we have this high temperature, so the, the molecule have more degrees of freedom. In this case, we have lot of conformations, but all the conformations they would not pass through this we have any scoring function, it would not pass through the scoring function. In this case, most of them are, are rejected. Then go with the accepted ones, then we decrease the temperature when you cool down, you can see there is less degrees of freedom. In this case, you can reduce the conformation sampling space, and finally, at lower search, you can uh, lower temperature, you can get less number of sampling. So, do the uh, local search and you can identify right the probable conformations right using this uh, simulate handling method. And the another one this is widely used genetic algorithm, right. The genetic algorithm is a stochastic algorithm to sample the data, right? They mainly used in the global optimization issues. So, what they do? First, take a, a pose, right? Initial population is generated, the randomly generated initial population. So, each chromosome represents a pose. So, in this case, you can have a random number of many poses, right? That generate the binding sites. Then you check there are some scoring functions based on torsional angles and the other energy potentials, right? See what are the locations of high scoring. Take the high scoring ones and you merge this high scoring poses, right, and to generate a new child. So, so get take randomly generated poses, some of them are having high score, some of them are having low score, and gen merge this uh, high scoring to uh, generate a child pose. Then the child pose they do some mutations, they can change the torsion angle or then check the orientation. So, make new confirmation and then see whether the score increases or decreases. Then if it is increases, then you make the uh, these new child ones with the previous ones original pose to make gen next generation. Do it again and again and again right up to the n generations or n significant improvements are uh, is observed. In this case, you can identify a high scoring pose. So, starting with the several random confirmation, so random poses, you get the one with the high score, then merge the high scores and form the child, then you do the mutations, mutations means the change in torsion angles and the rotations and find this uh, scoring, then again the fuse with this the higher high scoring ones and finally, we continue at least unless we get this uh, uh, significant no significant improvements. Right? Then you can identify this pose. So, likewise, there are various other algorithms available in the literature to search right, the confirmation space and see what are the probable confirmation space for the ligands to interact at the, at the protein side. Fine. So, this is the one aspect. What are the two major uh, aspects in docking? One is uh, sampling, sampling and, uh, scoring. and the scoring function. Right? What is the meaning of scoring function? What information you can get from scoring function? So, in different binding pose, which one is the best? Best one, right? You can see it is accurately calculate the binding affinity. So, for example, if you have a set of compounds or you do the virtual screening, there is select some compounds from a pool of compounds, it can identify the actives. So, then also it can rank the actives. If you have 10 compounds, you can use this scoring function, right? It will give the values for all the 10 and see the best ones, you can rank the actives in terms of this affinity, right. Then also you can score the poses of actives, right, higher than poses of inactive, right. For example, you have the 100 actives and 1000 inactives and if you have scoring function, you can make a scoring function in such a way that the poses of the active should be, should be high score compared with these inactives in the case of virtual screening. Likewise, you can adjust the scoring functions, then this scoring function can be useful to identify the actives compared to the inactives, right. So, then how to generate, how to develop the scoring functions, right, because there are various ways, right. The one is simple one we can say that if you have a protein and you have a ligand, we need a scoring function. Generally, if you talk, what do we expect if we have a protein and the ligand to interact? They should have complement, they should interact, right, right, they should have in the proper position. So, where we have the convex or concave in the protein, we should be the opposite in the case of this ligand. Then they have good uh, interactions and then they can make the complex with uh, the tight binding. So, when you say shape and chemical complementarity score, so how far their complementarity. Then you can do some empirical scoring depending upon the known structures, they can calculate the interaction energies, 
and from that you can uh, check with the known values activity values right and then see some empirical scoring right then we can see the force field scoring that depending upon the force field interaction energies you can calculate the interaction and using the interaction whether you can see ok this could be the probable uh, ligand right probable uh, potential compound then you can use a knowledge based scoring in this case if you have the ligand and the protein you can see the contacts and convert the contacts into potentials right and this is this potentials you can get the scoring function whether this can identify the actives right compared with the inactives. Then the consensus scoring right as we discussed in the structure secondary structure prediction you check the different types of scoring functions and pick up from here and there finally make the another scoring function right consensus from different uh, functions. I will explain the details now how to do that. First one is the shape and chemical complementarity score. So, in this case either you can see the cavity of the protein site the active site and the ligand you can see where this can fit you can find the complementarity. So, in this case so the protein surface right they are the active sites you divide into various zones and from this you can see how many hydrophobic interactions you could make and whether the ligand side also the, the partner ligand we have that much atoms are available. Like with hydrogen bond donator donor how many donors in the protein side and how many acceptors in the ligand side and so other way around how many acceptor in the protein side and how many ligands uh, donor acceptors in the ligand side. So, if we have the surface right we can divide the surface into several zones and each zones because ligand is small one right. So, whether this can fit with the binding site or not. So, you see the complementarity how what is the how many hydrogen donors if there is 10 hydrogen donors in the proteins and the ligand also there are 7 hydrogen donors, but no hydrogen acceptor then can we fit no right because if we have the hydrogen donor here there we need the acceptor. So, make the hydrogen bonds right. So, they have different types of uh, interactions hydrophobic hydrogen bond donors and hydrogen acceptors at the protein side and get the same from the ligand side and see the complementarity whether these numbers will match or not. So, if they match then you can say this ligand 1 is better than the ligand 2 right. So, likewise you can uh, see the scoring based on the shape or the chemical complementarity scores right we can do that. And the second one is the empirical scoring right how the empirical scoring will work right in this case if we first we get the binding affinity of known ligands right. For example, if we have 100 ligands I with this specific target right. So, we know the binding affinity experimentally known right. Then the right side we can calculate various parameters for example, uh, torsion number of torsions number of energy due to hydrogen bonds energy due to the charges energy due to the aromatic interactions and the hydrophobic other hydrophobic interactions. So, we can calculate various parameters right because we have the protein and we have the ligand right the affinity is known and the complex is available right then we can calculate all the parameters. So, when we get the all the parameters take the compound 1 right we can see delta G 1 this known this equal to A into delta G torsion 1 plus B into delta G hydrogen bond 1 and so on right. So, we take the compound 2 you can get the value delta G 2 you can use this right. So, now you here if you see the right hand side this delta G all delta G's you can calculate from the complex or if you take a free protein you can you can calculate this all the values are known. So, what is the variable here what is the constant here the coefficients are common the first one this a b plus a you can say constant. So, that we do not know. So, here we know the delta g this experimentally known right. So, now fit the number, fit these equations for example, we have 100 compounds you will get 100 equations then how fit these equations using the principle of least squares you can do 
right. So, with the principal least squares you can fit these equations and you can calculate all these constants. Now, for any new compound you have the you can make the ligand and you can see the protein when they make the complex then we have the all the constants we calculate all the energy terms and fit and then we will get the value of delta g. This will help help you to score if there are another 100 compounds or 200 compounds we calculate all the energy terms and the constants we know. So, fit this equation right you can fit this equation to get the value for the delta g. Then we have 500 compounds you get the 500 compounds we get the delta g and you can rank so, this is 1 this is 2 based on the scoring function right. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of having this empirical scoring? The advantage is very fast because we need to calculate only this energy this time energy times and you can also estimate directly you can estimate the binding affinity because we have the equation we have this equation get the values substitute the values and you can get the energy very simple right. So, what are the disadvantages? Right, because when we for developing this empirical scoring we need the value for delta g, but delta if delta g is available for thousands of compounds then you can get better results, but delta g is available only for few compounds right. For example, if you take any specific target you do not get many many compounds you get only few compounds. In this case you can the accuracy of getting this success in binding right is difficult because we get the fitting is not proper. Then you can see the discrepancy in binding affinities. Sometimes you have the, the binding affinity reported by different labs are different. In this case, it is difficult to fit with this particular equation. Then also, it depends on the placement of hydrogen atoms because they are making the different uh, interactions. So, it depends upon where the hydrogen and some atoms are placed. If it is wrongly placed, then we will have the issues with the hydrogen bond formation, right. Then also, depending upon the transferability of the training set, then the next one is the there is no penalty time for the bad structures. If the structures are not good, so, even then if they interact they make it interact then in this case there will be a good score. So, these are the several disadvantages of having the empirical scoring function, but the good part is if you get good number of affinity values and good number of structures are available the, then you can easily get good score using this empirical function. So, this works fine for some cases. Then the next one is the force field scoring right what is what is the meaning of force field calculating different types of energies. So, here this is this smell this for the van der Waals energy right and this term this electrostatic. So, this is the major terms used in the amber force field is widely used force field. So, this is well studied and also this is based on physical basis because calculate the energy. Then you can see this energy and calculate the energy for any complex you have the protein and you have the ligand right you can calculate the energy because we know the distance right and directly you can relate ok the, the energy is low so this is the probable compound the energy is high this is not a probable compound. So, for all the pairs you can calculate the energy you can do it is easy. So, what are the disadvantages yeah here it uses only some specific types of energies for example, electrostatic and the van der Waals energies. Right. In this case, they may uh, can require the salvation as well as the other types of entropy times. That is missing. So, we need to refine this uh, force field right to get the better results. Sometimes the electrostatic is overestimated. So, in this case, it will be difficult to rank the complexes. If the electrostatic over uh, estimated, then if there is the only positive negative charge atoms, then they will be ranked very high, like ignoring this hydrogen bonds and all. In this case, we need to be cautious when you use this uh, force field uh, type of scoring. Second aspect is they also use various constants. The constants are also important because they derive from the uh, known structures, right? This also plays a role when we get the non bonded interactions. So, we discussed about three different types or different types of scoring functions shape and chemical complementarity, empirical, empirical uh, scoring function, force. and the force field, right? Now, the next one is the knowledge based scoring function. Right. The knowledge based scoring function that depends upon how the atoms are in contact right in the ligand and the protein. So, what they do? So, they make a matrix right one side is for the protein other side is for the ligand 
and see the possibility of probability of contact between two atoms. What are different atoms in protein? C H N C O N plus O minus S right. Likewise ligand also you can have the different types of atoms and see how, how far the atoms are distributed. Take any a space say 3.5 angstrom or 4 angstrom and within the distance they can see the pair preference right whether the ligands right there is a n and this n are in contact or not n and o are in contact or not. So, they get this preference based on distance right then you see the any specific distance for example, 3.5 angstrom right. So, totally how many residue pairs among the residue pairs how many residue pairs in different specific groups right we normalize the values and finally, we, we can get this uh, propensity right take any distance get the atom contacts any pairs. So, based on the atom contacts we normalize the total number of contacts this you can help this help to get this propensity. Then we convert the propensity right into the energy potential right using this equation minus R t logarithmic of this propensity. We have propensity is treated as a kind of partition coefficient that means data from several sampling right. Then this propensity is converted to the free energy using minus R t into logarithmic of propensity. So, now we can get these values then we have the new protein ligand you have the protein in the ligand we can get the distance right for each pairs we have the delta g values and substitute the values and sum up the data and finally, you get the score. So, now for any complex you can say get this score and add up the scores. So, this is based on knowledge based scoring function. How this works? If any specific pairs of atoms they are preferred and that preferred atoms are also present in your new complex then they will have high score. If it is not preferred that if there is highly preferred in this new complex it will get low score depending upon the availability of these uh, contacts in known protein ligand complexes right this will score the new complex. So, this is kind of empirical, but it is more general because it is more distance than the binding data because we get more number of data because the binding energy data is not required we need the complexes that, that data are available. So, we have plenty of complexes we can do that the disadvantages is ok they use a typically a pairwise one this is mean for potential mean force, but the probability of the A and B to be in contact mainly depends upon the surrounding atoms right. In this case difficult to map right all the contacts in the case of the uh, protein uh, ligand complex. So, second one is the, the hypothesis originates from the statistics of the uniform liquid one, but here this is totally non uniform medium right in the case of the protein ligand complexes right in the environment. Then the next one is the consensus. So, now we have a different scoring function some scoring function performs good in some aspects. So, they try to integrate multiple scoring functions to get a consensus score either they use all the scoring functions or they use the data from different scoring functions with different weightage right. This will see there can be any uh, the better than any single scoring function for predicting this binding affinity. So, there is various scoring functions we discussed what are the various scoring functions shape complementarity, shape complementarity and chemical com uh, complementarity empirical, empirical uh, based scoring function force field. force field based scoring function knowledge based, knowledge based scoring function and, and the consensus how the consensus works why the consensus is important it sums up all yeah because the rationalists they think if you take any scoring function they give you some data. But if you compare that could be better than at you are using any of the single ones. So, in this case they try to use experimental data and see the different scoring functions and they merge the scoring functions either they use all the scoring functions or take some information from different uh, scoring functions and finally, they try to get a consensus one right. In this case you can get the better scoring function right so that it can account the binding affinity of various protein ligand complexes. Right. Now, when using this such uh, sampling space and the scoring functions right we can use to screen the compounds that is called virtual screening this we will discuss in this class right. So, get the compounds. 
So, there are various scoring functions and the software available in the literature right. For example, a uh, force field based software the gold score the doc and auto doc right. Auto doc is the uh, widely used public domain program that is available for uh, free in the academic uh, usage. Then there is some empirical based uh, force field like the chem score or the PLP or the glide uh, extra precision right or standard precision and knowledge based potential like the PMF or drug score or ASP and so on. So, several uh, software are available in the literature right and glide is the commercial one and the auto doc is uh, for free right you can uh, use any of these software right to get this docking with the protein with uh, any ligand. Then once you have the docking then if you have a set of uh, compounds right for example, the NMN there are 2 million compounds and the zinc 35 million compounds you can use this information to pick up the probable ligands right which can be a potential or uh, lead compound for a, in the case of in drug uh, discovery. So, in summarizing what did we discuss uh, in this class right so what are the various aspects of this uh, computer drug design right. So, if you have the what are the information required for this docking we need the protein site as well as the ligand right. So, and then if you have this one right. So, we have two types of docking we discussed one is the rigid docking and the flexible docking. What difference between rigid docking and flexible docking? Yeah, rigid docking with protein side is rigid, ligand also we can make a confirmation and then try to dock right. In the flexible docking it is protein is have different confirmations right. In this case you can generate various confirmation right which will take time. Flexible. flexible docking right because uh, we have searched through various confirmations right. So, what are the difference uh, uh, two different major aspects uh, in docking? Search algorithm, Search algorithm and the scoring function right. So, what are the various search algorithms we can use? Systematic search and the stochastic search. What the difference between systematic and stochastic search? Yeah, it takes all systematic way to do, but it is time consuming right. Stochastic it can randomly sample right and you can get the uh, probable uh, scoring uh, right the, the post right. Then the energy functions what are different types of energy functions? So, scoring functions right different types of scoring functions based on the complementarity or the empirical or you can see the energy or the using the propensity values and the consensus ones right. So, we have the sampling and then if we have the scoring function then you can uh, dock the compounds and if you have a set of uh, compounds in library you can do the virtual screening right to identify the probable compounds as the potential lead compounds right. In the next class I will uh, discuss about the virtual screening of compounds right. If you have a set of compounds how to identify the best ones right and uh, to get the probable compounds which are for example, lead compounds right. And then we will see the how the QSR models are also used right to identify the novel uh, potential inhibitors in the next few classes. Thanks for your kind attention.